you were not uh, media, so at the sheriff's request, could you step back this way with us, please? Ma'am, back up. I'm going. You said okay. five minutes. Yes, you have five minutes. Are you going to go hands on me, too? In five you minutes? You have five minutes. <laughs> wow. Sheriff Eric Fagan claims I am not media. After he kicked me out of a press conference, I sued him in federal court. But Fort Bend County tried to dismiss the lawsuit. Will the court grant the sheriff qualified immunity for what he did to me? Is that the media area? Yes, sir. So that part's not closed? That's correct. Just from here back is closed. You're 100% sure about that? It's closed right here. That's where the media, that's where the sheriff's office wants the media stage. Okay, just making sure you're on page with the sheriff's office because I have a few more I have a few more seconds before Sheriff Fagan goes hands on with me. Oh, is that right? That's right. Okay. Have a good morning. You too. Okay, here's the sheriff. We'll go we'll go video him. Either that or he's here to go hands on with me. What do y'all think he's gonna do once if I'm gonna get beat up by the sheriff here? Media, so at the sheriff's request, could you step back this way with us, please? How are you? Good, sir, and yourself? Not too good. What's your name? Deputy Garcia. You want to be on my show? It's up to you. I think a few people in Fort Bend County watch my show, don't they? Yes, sir, they do. You've probably seen it before. Yes, sir, I have. Mr. Pulliam, it would be greatly appreciated if you just stick right here. You're more than happy to film from right here. If you just stay back here, that'd be great. Okay, sir? All right? I appreciate you. You're a joke. You're a joke, man. So I can be right here? Okay. You won't tell me. This is, this is the game. It comes straight from the top, guys. Straight from the top. I don't know. I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten parking spots back. A county park is a traditional public forum, which is the most highly protected space for First Amendment activity. I'm still not sure what possible crime I could have been arrested for by attending an open air press conference in a public park. But after the interaction I had with Fagan a few minutes earlier, I was confident he would arrest me without hesitation. Okay, the, uh, the park has been shut down and the media, the PIO, will meet y'all outside of the park. Okay, okay. are, are y'all going to be able to do something with us here? Uh, yes, we'll go ahead and talk to y'all outside. Okay. okay. Uh, the park has been shut down, so we're asking that you step outside. There's going to be a media well, who area. Who shut the park? Who shut the park so, down? You shut it down? The park is shut down, so... Who shut it down? Everybody has to go. Okay. okay. Did the sheriff shut it down? No, sir, I did. You did. So what we're going to do That's cute. is I'm going to ask you What's and your the rest name? of the citizens, it's uh, Scott Hunnamar, a sergeant with the sheriff's office. What's your badge number? 822. So what I'm going to just advise two. you. Yes, correct. So actually what we're going to do. And, and this you work is, out of the Richmond office. I do. So for the family and everybody else's sake, as we complete this extrication, obviously this is not something that we want privy to the public. So obviously you're interested come. in getting sued. Look, I'm advising you that we're going to close this public park. Okay, and there's reasons that I have to do that, and I'm asking you to leave. You okay? said for the family, along with everyone else. For the family, sheriff, are you okay with Thank this you. park being closed? It's yes, I am. All right. Thank you. I'm gonna go make sure we get any other stuff. After five minutes. Yeah, five make, minutes to go ahead and step out. There's gonna be a location for the media. Then Where's that? Rest. It's gonna be outside at the entrance, at the entrance of the park. Okay, so where should we park on the road on the? Park, park park you can find, any place you can find a legal parking spot, that's where you can park at. 
Pathetic. Pathetic. Go ahead and start walking that direction. So many videos are coming out on your guys. Ma'am, back up. I'm going. You said okay. five minutes. Yes, you have five minutes. Are you going to go hands on me too? In five you minutes. You have five minutes. <laughs> wow. Hey, they're still stationary. They're leaving. They're and leaving. I'm leaving too. My okay. vehicle's over there. Start walking. Would you like Quit me to walk to that them. way? That's, a, that's some good advice stop. to go. Just stop, stop being bullies. Look, he's watching his clock. Fagan would later testify that a countdown is a really effective de-escalation tactic he uses. He's not even really looking at the watch. He's just looking down at the watch. I'm not shitting you guys, there are four transcript pages about this. Police are not required to obey the Constitution or legislative statutes unless there is clearly established case law on the matter. Qualified immunity is judicial legislation that protects government agents from liability excusing the conduct of all but the plainly incompetent or those who knowingly violate the law. Sheriff Fagan and the deputies filed a motion to dismiss my lawsuit on grounds of qualified immunity. The court disagreed. Fagan lost. It means I will have the opportunity to have my day in court to hold Fagan responsible for violating my First Amendment rights to record the police and to be treated the same as establishment media or other members of the public. Perhaps the biggest victory, however, is the court not blinking at my status as a journalist who is entitled to First Amendment free press rights. It led to national news coverage such as the headline in Reason magazine. Who is protected as a journalist? Everybody suggests court ruling. Journalism is an activity shielded by the First Amendment, not a special class or profession. Indeed, the biggest talking point of internet trolls is that YouTubers are not journalists. The police and their supporters claim we are not media in order to deny our First Amendment rights. The federal court ruling by Judge David Hittner stated, This is a civil rights case. Plaintiff Justin Pulliam is an independent journalist who films activities of public interest, including police interactions with civilians. It explained deputies eventually closed the park and members of the press, including Pulliam, were directed toward a media area near the entrance of the park. Pulliam was ordered to stand several meters away and alleges this order interfered with his ability to participate and gather information like the other media members at the press conference. Pulliam's complaint adequately alleges Garcia and Hartfield were deliberately interfering with Pulliam's clearly established constitutional rights under the First and Fourteenth Amendments when they removed him from the press conference and treated him differently than other members of the press. The court found that I sufficiently demonstrated that Fagan, Hartfield, and Garcia are not entitled to qualified immunity at this stage of the lawsuit. This is an important win, not just for me, but for everyone who engages in the activity of journalism. I knew I had a basic human right, also confirmed by the Constitution and clearly established case law, to be at the press conference. But there was more than that. Earlier in the year, Fagan personally invited me to his press conferences. If there's ever anything you want to see, say, I'd like to be at the press conferences, if you have an interview to do, at least I'm not the PIO officer. I'm telling them to invite people. You got a car? I don't, I don't have a car with me. Okay. All right. But uh, you, you said sure you got the number, huh? No, I don't. You don't have the number to the sheriff's uh, office? Under, under Nels, when I tried to interview Nels, they would make excuses about why they're always busy. Okay. The number to the sheriff's office, 281. All right. Yeah. Look. It's not about Democrat or Republican. I'm here to serve everyone. I'm not afraid to speak to anybody. So if you want to speak to me, fine. If you change my words or anything like that, that's that's on you. It's not on me. So it's not so. Yeah. And you're welcome to have a body camera too. So I plan to. Uh, looking forward to uh, you coming and interviewing us also. So we don't, you know, we want to publicize the things that we we are planning to do for mm -hmm. this community. I followed up with the public information officer. This is Jessica. I was hoping you would put me on the distribution list for um, really anything y'all send out. Um, for the media list? That's right. And any sort of blotter or any sort of daily reports y'all may send out as well. I'd like that too. Are you with a media outlet? Yes, I am. Which media outlet is that? Justin Pulliam. All right, can you send an email request for that? I emailed as directed, but was denied. They said, according to FBCSO policy, only accredited media outlets can be added to the list you're requesting to be added to. 
Press conferences are not open to the public and require an invitation from our office. Multiple viewers emailed the sheriff's office with well-written complaints. Chief Deputy Maddie Provost approved the official policy to block my access to information, stating that she had no worries and that she will handle any backlash. This ain't gonna look good, Sheriff. I bet you just don't wanna do it again. I bet he didn't do anything wrong. I bet he beats the charges too. I bet he did, I bet he... Because viewers emailed in, we now have more evidence to expose the county's unconstitutional discrimination against me. Sheriff Fagan is running for re-election on the slogan, Transparency, Accountability, Results. Yet he blocked me from his Sheriff Fagan Facebook page. This further bans my ability to gather information about the official acts of the Sheriff's Office. Fortunately, the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office Facebook page is kind of more my fan club than his. It's always encouraging to see so many supportive comments on there. To compete with me, Fagan used your tax dollars to build a YouTube studio at the Sheriff's Office, complete with a teleprompter and much of the same equipment that I use. Now that I think about it, they might actually be using my seized equipment. The administrative staff and deputies could be patrolling and solving cases. Instead, they consume our scarce public resources to write the sheriff's video scripts. Fagan's videos get double-digit views. Well, wait, nine. Let me fix that so I don't have to reshoot this video. There we go, 10. Hello, I'm Fort Bend County Sheriff Eric Fagan. Be discreet. Human trafficking affect us all. Stay vigilant. Stay informed. If Fagan truly wanted people to know what goes on at the sheriff's office, he would stop blocking me from reporting the local news to you. Instead, he wastes our money on videos that are barely seen. Here's a plot twist for you. Fagan attended Prairie View A&M University, where he studied mass communications and journalism for two and a half semesters before switching majors to criminal justice. During that time, he managed a 2.6 GPA while taking courses such as radio TV writing, public relations, intro to journalism, communication law, and radio TV performance. After college, Fagan was hired by the Houston Police Department, where he failed the police academy and was demoted to community services officer and later resigned. To address his deficiency, Fagan completed 100 hours of remedial training in reading comprehension and criminal justice writing from the Houston Community College Learning Assistance Center. He was hired by the Houston City Marshal, where he was assigned to office duties to facilitate revenue generation. Eventually, the Marshal's office was absorbed into the police department. For the next 30 years, Fagan had mostly fluff assignments such as community services unit, mayor's detail, public affairs, and human resources. He never obtained notable rank with an HPD. It's unclear when, if ever, he spent a meaningful amount of time on patrol assignment outside of his field training. To drive this point home, Fagan was able to get through half of 1999 without his police radio, which he lost. No cop with real duties would be able to cover that up for so long. Now, he's my sheriff. My experience speaks for itself. And it is that very experience that serves as a key drive in law enforcement, serving Fort Bend County effectively as we continue to positively impact the lives of our hardworking Fort Bend County residents, you can be confident in the fact that my team and I have been here before. The county media staff is expected to take pictures of Fagan's political appearances for social media, including weekend events that are unrelated to law enforcement. Incumbents gain a huge political advantage by using county resources as their own public relations campaign staff. Sheriff Fagan makes over $150,000 per year, while his deputy chauffeur takes him to community appearances. Internal emails reveal that Fagan's administration evaluates the viewpoint of potential media coverage before deciding whether to release information. PIO Jackie Preston, who was filming the park press conference with her cell phone, wrote, Want to make sure it's not just negative peace, but one that shines a light on the good investigative work of FBCSO. Chief Deputy Provost replied, I agree. Let's make a final decision after we see her angle for the documentary. I obtained these emails 720 days after I paid for them and only after the Attorney General intervened. 
A benevolent public servant would seek to inform as many audiences as possible about the official acts of the sheriff's office, both the good and the bad. Do you have anything to say yet? Mm. We have a public information officer that will be coming up. Okay, thank you. The crime scene's moving, so we're going to move the crime scene tape that way, and we're going to ask that you please move that way. How far? Uh, as far as this tape goes, that way. Who are you? I'm Lieutenant. What's your name, Lieutenant? Lieutenant Simons. Simons? Yes, sir. Let's dive into the legal procedures that led to this court victory. My lawsuit alleges that Sheriff Fagan and the deputies violated the First Amendment by unreasonably restricting my right to record. They prevented me from gathering news by removing me from the press conference and forcing me to remain so far away that I could not meaningfully record the event. My right to participate in the press conference alongside other media outlets is clearly established. That's quite inconvenient for the county defendants who seek qualified immunity. So they fort bend the facts to avoid arguing about the merits of my allegations. Instead, the county reframed the issue, stating that my claims fail because I did not allege a clearly established constitutional right to stand wherever I want during a press conference. Additionally, the officers want qualified immunity because I did not complain about not being able to see or hear at the time. That's a heck of a catch-22. Because if I yelled at them, then they'd claim that I was disrupting the press conference. And it also overlooks the fact that the officers walked away without answering the question I asked them. So I can be right here? Okay. You won't tell me. This is, this is the game. It comes straight from the top, guys. Oh, and remember that time I did complain? They arrested me. Across the street. Uh, well, hold on. If it's not for safety, I already have permission from the land. I have for permission to stay. It is for so safety. you cannot fill my client up. So is everyone leaving or just me? Across the street. You're interfering with my job. You're making my job a lot harder than it needs to be. Instead of arguing the truth and reality, the police spin fantasy narratives created years later to justify their misconduct. However, the reason I was ejected was clearly stated by the officers at the time. <coughs> Yeah, go back. If you were not uh, media, so at the sheriff's request, could you step back this way with us, please? The sheriff now claims a prior physical altercation provides a legitimate and compelling reason to move me away from the sheriff. It's the equivalent of the mob veto. If someone accosts you and takes your phone, then you lose your First Amendment rights. The county provided no legal citations or analysis to support their position. My attorneys at the Institute for Justice Corey Clark and Josh House filed a detailed response motion arguing, as to qualified immunity, the rights at issue here are as clearly established as any can be. They include the right to film officials discharging their duties, the right not to be singled out based on discrimination against your viewpoint, and the right not to be singled out and arrested as an act of retaliation for past speech. In short, the amended complaint meticulously and at length alleges that Fort Bend County violated Justin's rights based on an official policy and practice promulgated by Sheriff Fagan by singling out Justin for mistreatment because of his speech. IJ concluded, defendants' half-hearted attempts at dismissal should be denied. Most are either inadequately briefed or improperly raised. And to the extent defendants adequately raise issues, their arguments are meritless. In their reply to that motion, the county said, The law is clear that plaintiff must plead facts, not conclusions. This, the plaintiff did not do. Oh wait, let's turn the page. We're in the same paragraph. The defendants concede that plaintiff pleaded statements attributed to Sheriff Fagan that plaintiff was not media. This is what the court had to say. While asserting their above contentions, the defendants offered no further case law or facts to support their contention that Pulliam's lack of complaint at the time or the occurrence of an alleged altercation defeats Pulliam's complaint. As for my arrest, the county provided no legal citations and made no attempt to justify the officer's actions. They solely rely on the fact that I was indicted by a grand jury. The court denied qualified immunity on the arrest claims, noting, individual defendants assert no case law to support their proposition that an indictment precludes a claim for First Amendment infringement. Indeed, based on the facts alleged in the complaint, 
it appears Pulliam was singled out and arrested for exercising his rights under the First Amendment. I was the only member of the public indicted on a misdemeanor charge in 2022. Was that done for a valid criminal justice purpose? Or was the real reason for the indictment to shield the sheriff from civil liability? After all, it's the only thing the county pointed to in their briefs. I mean, I'm ready for the speedy trial, so I agree it was. So, I mean, let's lay it all out. You know, I think my attorney emailed y'all like very promptly, like a week or two after I was arrested. So, yeah. Yeah, I think he was in touch pretty soon. Yeah. I take a misdemeanor to the grand jury. I only see that with police officers. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen it with a regular citizen. It, 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 it happens. I mean, it's not the norm, but it gives you, you know, um, a security blanket, I guess, in a way, to be honest. But it gives 12 citizens a chance to look at something and you know, give, you, give you that advice. Hey, listen, you know, is, is this good or not? Well, y'all probably had an assistant district attorney in there too, right, or more? Well, that's, that's who presents it. Yeah, that, no, their citizen didn't present the case on me. Your office did, yeah. Correct, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's the way it works, but... Interesting. But. Finally, Fortman vaguely raised a single incident Monell defense to county government liability. My attorneys pointed out that the county never actually argues that Sheriff Fagan's order at the press conference was a single incident. Furthermore, my complaint alleges a number of events to demonstrate a policy, practice, or custom of discriminating against me for my viewpoint. The court denied the motion to dismiss the claims against Fort Bend County, noting that while defendants raised the Monell Doctrine, the motion was brief and did not offer much analysis on why the claims should fail. Local politicians might find it convenient to eliminate their critics in the new media. However, the federal court apparently respects the legitimacy of my investigative journalism. Ironically, I was the only reporter at the press conference who the police knew. The others were meeting Fagan for the first time. But this is not a competition to me. Many of the Houston outlets are doing great work uncovering police corruption. I hope my efforts help all local reporters gain better access to cover police incidents. I'm Brittany, by the way. I don't think I've ever met you, Sheriff. Nice to meet you. Oh, sure. I don't think I've ever met you. Even if I walked up to document a Fort Bend County police scene for the first time, I would still have the right to be there. And that's the reason for my lawsuit, to establish everyone's right to film the police, even people who criticize government officials. I owe this victory to Tori Clark. She dedicated a tremendous amount of time to the case and helped me through a dark time. We are fortunate to have her fighting to restore our individual rights. The government doesn't get to decide who reports the news, and it doesn't get to retaliate against journalists it doesn't like. Yet the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office has repeatedly harassed, intimidated, and retaliated against Justin because of his reporting. In July 2021, the sheriff himself ordered officers to remove Justin from a press conference at a public park just because the sheriff determined that Justin was not real media. If you were not media. In Fort Bend County, the law doesn't apply to me, meaning I'm not entitled to constitutional and statutory rights. And when people violate me, they are not held accountable. And it's not just that the sheriff ejected me from the press conference, it's also the words that he said. I'm not media. That is, I'm not entitled to First Amendment rights. I have no right to film him or the police. And it's not just about filming the police, it extends to any information gathering, open records, press releases, heck, even being able to view the sheriff's Facebook page. And so, you know, this whole thing of being kicked back and, and with armed police officers pulled away from a press conference while I'm live streaming, the other news crews are there, it was so humiliating. I mean, I don't think I had been embarrassed, at least in the past, decade of my life. Like, guys, it was the worst. And so, yes, I'm scared of filming the police. I don't want to be harassed. I'll be pushed back where I can't even meaningfully document it, arrested or worse. And, you know, I get some people, oh, well, why didn't you stay there and take the arrest? Well, for one, I have no backup. You know, it's just me. And I was like, well, if I do that, no telling what lies they'll make, no telling what'll happen, and I might not even have any evidence because they'll take my stuff. And I was right, we know they would take my stuff because when they did arrest me later, they seized my stuff 
And that wasn't enough. While I was in jail, they tried to seize my truck to get my dash camera. So yeah, you know, I didn't get arrested. And I spent months of my time on litigation. So I'm wondering, you know, because of that, you know, I complied. Yes, I complied with the police. So my video, what, 10, 20,000 views. I scored an important victory, a, a federal court victory. However, my journalism would be meaningless if no one watched. Your viewership and support means the world to me.